The original Wizard of Legend was a top-down, 2.5D, mage battling roguelike. Wizard of Legend 2 is a top-down, 3D, mage battling roguelike. At this rate, I look forward to Wizard of Legend 6 being directly injected into my brain. The original Wizard of Legend was... fine? More roguelite than roguelike? brutally hard without much in the way of character growth or progression or development. The game didn't throw you many upgrades, and it emphasized the elemental nature of your spells, as well as the enemies you were facing, which turned the game into a kind of wizard Pokemon, but with more falling off of the map. Over the course of a run, you needed to accumulate a decent variety of spells to handle any enemy, biome, or scenario. And luckily, these spells, they were rad as hell. In Wizard of Legend 2, the gameplay and spellcasting is still awesome, and gained a fresh lick of paint. You start your run with three spells, you can upgrade these across the run, you can pick up two additional spells, and these can be swapped out and changed with any that you find along the way or buy from the different shops available. This keeps your build pretty fluid, each spell has its own recharge time, which is a fun way to balance the spells over something like a mana system. Once you have five spells, you can pretty much always be firing something off. Finding the right combination of moves for you and your playstyle is really rewarding. Raise up two sweeping pillars of stone, smash them together in front of you with a clap, fire off your dragon spells at the gathered enemies, and then cut down any survivors with some lightning spells. I really, I really like lightning spells. You'll soon find builds and combinations which suit your desired playstyle, and learn what spells complement each other best. The player choice and expression available through the spells is wide-ranging, and unlike the first game, you can specialize in one element to live out your dreams of being the last airbender. There are so many different combinations, upgrades and adjustments from trinkets, creating so many different paths to victory. The combat at the core of this game is highly engaging and a ton of fun. So how does a game with such a fun core end up feeling well, let's look at everything that isn't gameplay. Like the first game, Wizard of Legend 2 is set around the Tri-Wizard Tour- I mean the Trials of Legend. Beating the Trials gives you the title of Wizard of Legend, giving your wizard access to a great pension plan and health insurance, or something I, I wasn't paying attention. At present, there are two levels, one is made up of four stages, and the other one's made up of five. Both levels include two major bosses, one is a wizard from the first game, and the other is a new boss unique to that area. I presume the full version will have at least three levels, with Hieronymus, a wizard that's introduced during the time in the game, at the end as some sort of final fight. Hieronymus is really fucking annoying, so I'm actually looking forward to kicking his ass. After a number of runs, I beat these two levels in between four and five hours, which is pretty short. And even with a third level, this would still feel closer to a proof of concept than a full game. In the hub world, you can activate different upgrades, change bonuses available to you in the trial, and equip and test different spells and trinkets. So the format is pretty unchanged from the original, but it does differentiate itself visually. One of my least favorite parts of Wizard of Legend 1 was the 2.5D top-down perspective. It felt a little bit too imprecise for the demands of the gameplay. Wizard of Legend 2 does do away with this, which I think is for the better. But that's not the only visual improvement that's been made here. The game is a lot prettier, thanks in no small part to its cell-shaded art style. Enemies are well defined from the game's backdrops, and the levels themselves are better decorated, with more visual interest than the first game. The spells are the main attraction, visually and audially. They really pop. The attention to detail here is great, and I spent a good amount of time just appreciating how these spells sounded, never mind looked. The spells have some real bite to them, and enemy attack sounds are really punchy as well. 
However, outside of the sound effects, the audio of the game is, well, it's bad. The voice acting is fine, but the dialogue, oh, the dialogue. You hear the thunder first, then you see the lightning. The thunder! But don't take victory for granted. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The writing here is poor, and it's just made worse with the overuse of every piece of dialogue. Some lines are repeated every single run. Keeping your health high like that, that is crucial. Who a constitution of a soldier? Some lines are repeated every time you pick up a particular item. This game is just far too chatty, which would be fine if there was a good variety of dialogue that was well written, but it is repeated so often and the writing ranges from bad to just lazy. Any trinket you pick up, which is gold related, get ready to hear some sort of variation of the fable of King Midas. The boss dialogue is somewhat better, probably because it's a little bit more sparingly used. It's that usual Pokemon trainer patter of, I'm gonna beat you and this is why, but that still manages to sneak in some horribly cringeworthy lines. Identify your enemy's weakness and conduct yourself accordingly. And what compounds all of this poor writing is the fact that it's a roguelike, so you'll hear these lines again and again and again and again. Any shot at a vibe or an atmosphere is just grated away by the non-stop yapping in your ears. This doesn't serve gameplay, it doesn't serve storytelling, and it doesn't serve an atmospheric purpose. It feels like the devs are trying to get their money's worth from the voice actors that they hired in for a day. Let's get into some more wider ranging problems as well um, that also drag the game down, like its menus and its maps, either being too difficult to navigate or difficult to read. That's if you can make it into the teleport points to use the map, because I, pretty consistently my character would just keep running and drag me out of these screens. Some of the upgrades are straight up broken, and I don't mean that in a, this is so broken, it makes the game more fun. No, not that kind of way. No, I mean it in the kind of way of, this is completely broken, doesn't work, and ultimately pointless kind of way. Percentage bonuses do not seem to activate. Some trinkets, which are meant to level up over time, and some spell upgrades just don't happen. And I thought I was going crazy when I wasn't feeling any differences in the changes from my upgrades to my spells or my trinkets, but then I upgraded my double bad dragon fire spell from its 10 charges to 15. It worked for a moment, and then it went back to 10. I felt so vindicated, but where's my other 5 charges? I feel like I'm fighting the game as much as playing it. The challenge icons in the top corner that occur are barely functional and not a good clear indication of success or failure. Navigating the hub world just feels awful. As the areas are wide and spaced out, the game really doesn't need a button press for each door, but yet it demands this. I understand it for the portal to get into the main game, but just navigating between rooms feels so clunky. And then there's some really basic issues. I mean, day one game dev school basic. You can't mute the music in the second level. It never stops playing. You can't adjust it. You can't scale it. It's just basic quality of life features that don't work. How do you f that up? There's a lot of bugs and issues and general flaws here. Beyond detracting from what the game does well, it really raises a question mark around early access in general. But that's a whole other video. What makes Wizard of Legend 2 so frustrating is it has a fun core, but it's surrounded by so many subpar elements that just drag the whole experience down. Which is such a shame, as I love this combat. I wish there was more game for me to experience it in. At its heart, Wizard of Legend 2 is not really a sequel to Wizard of Legend 1. It's a remake. What it takes from the first, it does do better. 
but it needs a lot more work before I could even ever consider recommending it to anyone. Presentation issues, audio issues, poor writing, poor menu design, bugs, 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 and overall lack of content are ruining what could be a great game. And don't even try playing it on Steam Deck. Trust me, it, it is beyond... You can't even. You can't even play it. It's unplayable on Steam Deck. I can't even predict where the game goes from here. I don't even know if the publisher still exists. Their logo is at the start of the game, but I was under the impression that Humble Games shuttered. So don't pick this up at early access launch. Maybe wait till 1.0? Well, I've come to accept early access as a part of our industry. Some games like Wizard of Legend 2 are just taking the absolute piss. Only time will tell, and hopefully this video ages like fine milk, and we will all end up with a solid Wizard of Legend 2 at full release in the not too distant future. But what would your chosen wizard powers be? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're a regular viewer and wondering, where has Zep been? Um, apologies, I was getting married. I do hope you can forgive my absence, but expect more videos from me and maybe some in different genres in the not too distant future. Thank you so much for the delicious gift of your time. Take it easy, stay hydrated, and I will see you next time. Bye bye <laughs>